One of the most notable features of sim theory is the ability to switch AI models. Now, if you've only had a little bit of contact with AI so far, you'll most likely have only used the GPT series of models by OpenAI. So originally GP3, GPT 3.5 Turbo, aka ChatGPT, is what you would have used. The modern ChatGPT uses GPT 4O or GPT 4 Turbo, one of these models. Um, or maybe even GPT-4 O-Mini. They don't really specify. They change it out as it suits them for cost and speed reasons. But in Sim Theory, we allow you to try essentially all of the available models. Now, that isn't quite true. There's hundreds or thousands of models available, but we take all of the state-of-the-art models and make those available, plus any new and interesting models we find that are available. And you can simply switch mid-chat to all of these different models. So I'll just give you a quick example of, of actually switching between the models, and then I'll go through and explain what the models are and when you might like to use them. So let's start with Claude 3.5 Sonnet, which in my opinion is the best available model currently. And I'll ask it a question like, we need something that we can do consistently. Hi, can you write a short story about a duck? Now, Claude's pretty good at generating content. So the determined duck. Okay, and it's written a story about a duck. I'm not, I'm gonna spare you time and not read that out. So you'll see a few things. One, it was, it wrote this. And then secondly, the speed at which the text came in. So now let's switch to a model like Grok Llama 3.170 billion versatile. And I'll say, can you write a short story about a duck? Now, firstly note how much quicker that came in. Secondly, we get a different story coming in. And if you looked into it deeply, you would see subtle differences in the way the different models did this. Now, the idea here is that different models have different abilities. There's benchmarks out there showing that certain models are better than others at, say, maths and reasoning. Some are better at content creation, which is what we were just doing there. Um, and the idea you'll find is that depending on what you're working on, you will get different results from different models, some of which may suit you better. And I'm going to take you through now and explain what each of the models do. Before I do, it's worth noting that as you switch between your models, so say I switch over to Coach Steve, our very serious business coach, you'll notice that the instruction following abilities of the different models can vary greatly. Let's switch to Google. I'll just start a new chat. Steve, duck, write a story about a duck quickly. See how he goes with this. What's the connection to agent creation? Get back to work. Time is money. So you'll see that Gemini Pro understood the agent instructions that Steve is all about coaching you in business. He's not about writing stories about ducks. So let's try a different model and see if we get similar results of it sticking to that Coach Steve personality. So let's try a much smaller model. So let's try, um, say, Mistral Small, for example. And we'll see how it behaves. So you'll see that straight away, Mistral Small just wrote a story about a duck, except it called the duck diligence. So it really sort of stuck with the theme about being determined to reach your goals, for example. Um, but nevertheless, uh, it, it didn't really stick with the whole idea that you're not really meant to be writing stories. Let's try just one more model uh, to see what kind of results we get. I'm just trying to think of a, a good one. Maybe we'll try one of the GPTs. We'll try GPT-40 Mini. I'll just start a new chat. This is GPT-4's latest and cheapest model. No time for stories, Chris. Focus on your video. And so you'll see that each of the models have a different way of interpreting the instructions and the personality and things like that. And so switching between them can be interesting. So just to quickly go through the different models that are available, the Claude series of bottles are by a company called Anthropic. They're people who broke away from OpenAI in the early days with a focus on safety. And so their models are really good and have been getting better. Claude Opus for a long time was the best and, and was competing with GPT-4. A lot of people said it wasn't as good, but Claude 3.5 3 Sonnet at the moment, I think is widely accepted to be the best model on many metrics. And just from my own use, this is my go-to day-to-day in terms of its quality. We then have the OpenAI models, so 3.5 Turbo, GPT-4, GPT-4 Turbo, and GPT-4 Omni. Now, Omni is the only one that supports 
the image recognition. So if you paste an image in the chat or the screen sharing, it's able to do that. Um, so out of the GPT models, that's the only one that has that multimodal availability. Um, whereas with the Claude models, they can all do it. So it's pretty interesting to see that contrast. The Gemini models are known for their large context window. So these are from Google. So the context window is how much information you can put in. So how much of the grounded memories and memories you give the AI that it's able to understand um, and how much in terms of like your chat history can fit in before information needs to be discarded. So Google's really good. Google is also the only one that supports video uploads. So if you upload a video into Sim Theory, Google is able to interpret that video natively without having to like take a transcript and things like that. So that's another interesting thing to play with and it can obviously do audio as well. But day to day, I don't find Gemini gives quite as good results. It's okay, um, but really you wanna be using that large context to bother using it. Gemma is Google's open source model. It's very small. You're not gonna get as good results with that. Now, the series of Grok models, what Grok is, is different inference hardware. So most uh, AI runs on what's called GPUs, which were originally designed for graphics in video games. Now, um, this obviously isn't the most efficient way to do it because the chips aren't purpose-built. What Grok has done is built purpose-built inference chips specifically for AI. They sort of foresaw what was coming and built dedicated hardware. Now, it's expensive to run, but it's incredibly fast. Like, let me just show you an example of this instant, right? The duck story now. Now watch how fast this result comes in, no matter what it is. You'll see, I mean, maybe I should have done something longer, but you, the idea is that the Grok inference is just that much faster and you've got to try it to feel it. The Llama series of models, including the ones running on Grok, are made by Facebook, and these are the largest and best open source models. The 405 billion model is said to be the first open source or openly available model that you can run yourself that is on par with GPT-4. So that model is definitely worth a try to see what the state-of-the-art open source models are like. Mistral is a French company who are making their own models on a unique architecture um, and they're gradually improving. You'll also see they have dedicated coding models, which we have available here, plus their various other ones, including this one, which is open source. The Quen models is a Chinese model made by Tencent, the phone company, um, and their models give really good results, I find, so they're definitely worth trying. And then Wizard LM2 is Microsoft Mixture of Experts model. To be honest, I barely ever use it. Um, I used it once for the podcast and that was it. So switching models in Sim Theory, it's something worth trying. It's something you don't really get in many other products. And I encourage you when you're working throughout the day to try different models and see what kind of results you get.